Okay, so this morning I had a little bit of time to tinker, and I wanted to talk about the new Fuji release, the Fuji X-S10. So I'll probably just call it the S10 to make it a little bit easier. Um, and I can't help wondering if this was a direct shot at Nikon. Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know, that don't watch my channel, I usually make videos with my Nikon Z50, my Nikon Z5, or my Nikon D780, right? Um, and when I saw the rumors of the S10, and if I'm pointing over here, it's because it's on the screen. When I saw the rumors of the S10, I thought it was kind of it was interesting because I noticed that it, it actually had a grip, like an actual protruding grip, okay? A lot of the Fuji films and um, a lot of the Fuji cameras and the Sony cameras and even some of the Canon, well, I don't know, Canon's pretty good at it, but most of them, one of the things that most people complain about is the ergonomics. With their smaller cameras, they get rid of the, the, the grip so it's more of a compact camera. The problem is that when you start adding lenses and stuff, and it, you know you can get some pretty large lenses, it because becomes uncomfortable. So a lot of people will get some sort of plating for it, or something like that, uh, some sort of extra grip to add. You know, give it a little bit more handhold on it. Um, and it's the one thing that Nikon has had, and they've always had, and they've done really well at, in my opinion, is the ergonomics of the grip. Now it doesn't fit everybody's hand perfectly but most people would agree that they try that they've always stuck with giving you a good amount of grip on their cameras that's even including the dslrs and everything else so this morning i saw they, they did a pre-release they launched it out to um a few select people to do uh pre-production release videos and it it looks pretty interesting First, I did not think that camera was going to come in under $1,000, and it sounds like they're going to try and hit the $999 mark for the body. That right there puts it in competition with the Z50. It comes with in-body image stabilization. Now, if you're a video goer, it's not as big of a deal as it sounds because if you're, well, let me put an asterisk. If you're a video goer, a vlogger style person, um, that needs stabilization and wants to use wide lenses, Fuji has always been known for its kind of parallaxing um, effect when it comes to that. So I don't know if, the, I can't see this one being any better than the X-T4 because it is a smaller system, right? They had to shrink the IBIS. They say they're going to get roughly the same amount of stops out of it. Um, but for video, the stops don't matter as much as, is, well, there's, there's other things that matter for video as far as the IBIS is concerned. So if they tweak that algorithm out, that would be interesting. But I'm going to go back. I'm looking at these side by side. And if you pull up a top-down view, maybe I'll try and add it in the video. Maybe that way. Maybe I'll try and add a, a couple little pictures of them side by side of, of initial pictures of what I have. It really looks like Fuji said, you know what? We make a really good and they do they make a really good photographer's camera they do the, the the controls are the manual controls are beautiful it's a really nice neat system um i've always had fun shooting with the fuji cameras but this one really looks like i'm looking at this thing this thing really looks like they said you know what we're gonna go after the one thing that we haven't really had and that's ergonomics and they looked at nikon and went their ergonomics are pretty good let's Let's do what they did, but with our flair. And it, that's, I mean, when you look at the top down of this S10, it's going to be interesting because I see a lot of similarities. Now, it's a camera, okay? So most cameras are similar to each other, kind of like phones are similar to each other. But given the departure of how Fuji usually does their designs to this design, it smacks of... It's almost like they're giving homage to Nikon because of their ergonomics. Now, that's not good for Nikon because Fuji makes a really good camera. The price point is really well. The IBIS is going to be really good for photographers and for videographers. But 
Fuji's going to make a very compelling statement saying, you know what, don't spend $850 on this. You know, don't look at any of the, the, the Canon M Mark II stuff or, you know, the new D or the new M50 Mark II that's coming out, which people are already like just hammering on. Um, <clears throat> don't look at any of their, any of their other systems. Now you have a Fuji with more of a, of a camera actual grip and a lot more, a lot less functionality as far as, as far as controls, but a lot more functionality as far as what most people are used to using if they're coming from Canon or Nikon. And what I mean by that is Canon and Nikon use dials and Canon will have a rotary dial, dial in front, dial in the back, power button on top. It's kind of easy to get to. Now, sometimes they put it over here, whatever, you know, Canon. I'm talking about Canon at, Canon at this point or other companies. But I'm literally looking at the Fujifilm and I've got to put a picture up here. I mean, it's got the on off switch on the release button. It's the same. It's, it's literally the same. It's got the record button next to it. It's got, it looks like it's got either the, 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 um, ISO button right behind it. Not, not exactly in the same spot, but pretty darn close. And it's got a mode dial and it's got a back control. It's got a back control wheel and it looks to be a front control wheel. The only difference is, is that they have a controller on this side as well. I mean, I'm looking at this camera going, they took the, they took the Nikon Z50 body, took what people liked about it, added on to it. I know some of you are going to freak out when I say this. Sorry. They gave it a flippy screen, right? Because it's an, it's an entry level, uh, photos, more of a hybrid camera, right? Hybrid shooter camera. So some people actually want that. It is what it is, you know? Now there's no weather sealing on it. So for videographers, that's not as big of a deal. Cause the second you open the flaps and, and plug crap in your weather resistance goes down. But for you photocentric, the, the Nikon is more weather sealed. At least they, they always said that, that, that there is some weather sealing to their stuff. Fuji's quick to say it's not weather sealed. Now that doesn't mean you can't use it at the coast. It doesn't mean if it's misty outside or, or whatever that you can't use it, but just make sure you cover up your ports and just know that they're not going to warranty it. Right. I'm interested in this camera. I am. Now I'm not saying I'm going to jump off of my Z50 or any of my Nikon products, but I really think Fuji is listening to what people, and yeah, their internet shills and their YouTube shills and we're all of these, you know, enthusiast hobos that don't know what the heck we want. But this is also a price point camera that fits what a lot of people are looking for. And what I, a lot, I mean like the general public that, you know, that don't know any better that aren't professional photographers, right? I don't mean to harp on that, but I seem to get a lot of hate every time I talk about things that, that maybe people want. I mean, it's not my fault that, um, one of the most trending searches on Google and on YouTube for the past six months is how to make YouTube videos and what camera should I use to make videos? I mean, there's a market for this. Sorry, there is. And I think Fuji's like, okay, I, we're going to, we're going to go after this a little bit harder. Um, they started that with the flippy screen on their X-T4. And now I think they're doing exactly what I said Nikon needs to be doing. They're introducing really well-rounded cameras for video and photography in a lower price range. Now it's not lower than the Z50 technically, but given that it's added IBIS, if Nikon were to add IBIS to this, you know, they would have charged 11 to $1,200 for this camera. So if you take IBIS out of that camera, the price point would be 749. It'd be probably a hundred dollars less than this starting out. So I, I can only, it only feels like, I mean, it really feels like this is a shot across Nikon's bow. This is Fuji saying, we're coming after you. We've got our base. Now we're going to make a new series to come after you guys. So let me know what you think. Comments down in the comment section. Be respectful, please. Thumbs up if you like the video. 
Um, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'll put some links in the description for the stuff that I use to record today. If you are curious to know, I am recording on the Z5 in 4K with an FTZ adapter and my 10 to 24 DX lens <sighs> with obviously if the road for audio. So now I will be adjusting the white balance because I didn't want to screw with it. Um, if you guys want to know how I do it, the white balance adjustment, usually I use my white balance card, but if I'm in a hurry, if you look in the background here, I've got a gray shelf. It's a little lighter than the 18%, but I can adjust for that real easy. And it makes for an, it, it makes for a pretty good white balance. So, and also I, I use this. That's how I adjust for white balance on the fly if the camera didn't pick it up right. Usually I don't have it in auto, but you know, uh, this office is the office of doom because I've got natural light coming back there. I've got um, old school warm lighting, like 3200 Kelvin lighting coming from up here, but two of the vol bulbs are 5000 or 4800 Kelvin lighting. And it's just this, yeah. I feel sorry for any camera that tries to white balance in this office. Anyways, talk to everybody later. And as usual, have an amazing day.